What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and this is the big finale to 2023. Last year, my big video to end the year off was surviving 100 days in grounded on woe difficulty, and you guys seem to like it a lot. So this year, I wanted to go out with an even bigger bang. This time, I'm playing grounded on woe, but it's hardcore, meaning if I die at any point, the world ends. Not only that, but I'm also going to try and 100% the game in 100 days. Now I know what you're thinking, that isn't too hard, but in 1.3, you now need all gold cards to get 100%, along with killing all the bosses and a whole host of other achievements. This challenge will be the hardest I have ever attempted. Before we begin though, over 80% of you are not subscribed, so if you do enjoy the content and appreciate the effort I put in, make sure you hit that big red button as it's completely free and only takes a second. It's worth noting that this entire playthrough was live streamed, meaning if you want to watch the entire unedited version for some strange reason, which is around 90 hours long, then I'll link a playlist in the description, which you can find on the channel, that has all of the streams. We begin by making the world. As you can see, it is a regular world world, meaning I didn't change any custom settings, so base raids are unfortunately on. There are also a few other settings changed in the new world mode, like increased bug health, fall damage, and hunger and thirst drain. The day also goes a rate of 0.8 speed, meaning that now it lasts a full hour instead of 48 minutes. Time to hop into the world. I spawned in the kid case, as always, and began by collecting a bunch of basic resources from the ground, including sprigs, pebblets, and sap. I then grabbed some granola bars from the field station and used the resource analyzer to analyze sap plant fibre and a pebblet. This allowed me to craft the pebble axe, which I used to chop down the grass blocking the laser, which would be useful later on. I made sure to take out weevils whenever I saw them, as I was going to need their meat for a shield. I then used my axe again, this time to cut down a dandelion, giving me eight tufts. I would need a lot of these to avoid fall damage, especially since they're now single use. Off to another analyzer now to analyze the raw weevil meat, along with clover leaves and sprigs. This allowed me to make the pebble hammer, our second tool, which I then used to break some acorns, which are needed for all sorts of items in the early game of Grounded. I headed back to the field station and analyzed the acorns to unlock the shovel and armor recipes. I built myself a crafting bench and went to craft the acorn armor like always. But there was a problem. The 1.3 update changed the recipe for the armor, meaning I couldn't craft any of it. So instead, I had to settle for a full set of clover armor. Disgusting! Next, I made myself an acorn shovel and used it to dig up some grubs, which I would kill in order to obtain grub hide. I hopped into the pond to peep Trudy, the koi fish, giving us our first gold card out of 64. Although this one is so easy to get, it basically doesn't even count. The reason I'd hopped into the pond was to collect a bunch of algae. I then set up a water container under the straw from the juice box, as this would automatically catch the juice for me, before building a workbench and using it to make the weevil shield, giving me a little bit more protection. I built a roasting spit to cook the grub meat on that we had just gotten, and then used algae we had just collected to make the acorn leg plates, giving me some more defence. I set up a chest at my little makeshift base, and used it to clear out my inventory, as it was a complete mess. Into the caves we go, where I wiped out the lawn mites chomping away at the laser, giving me a bunch of mite fuzz. I then went deeper into the cave, allowing me to grab our first scabby. We would need to collect all 50 in order to 100% the game. I headed back to the mysterious machine and activated it, which entered the cutscene and opened up the oak lab. While on my way there, I raised a burgle flag, a brand new quest type in the game which replaces the trail markers in 1.3. Although strangely, this didn't give me any raw science. I headed into the oak lab for the first time and opened up the rooms, grabbing a bunch of sap from the shelf and drinking water from the cooler right before I dehydrated. This cooler would keep me hydrated a lot in the early game since it has infinite water. I made sure to pick up burgle from the ground and collected a bunch Bunch more loot in the lab while he was blabbering. I also used some of our grub hide from earlier to make a basic canteen and then filled it with water from the cooler. I talked to Burgle and skipped through all of his dialogue as quickly as possible, allowing me to use the hand scanner activating the ASL. I of course made sure to purchase the smithing station along with multi-story bases. I also checked on the quest system which is new in 1.3. As you can see we were making good progress on the apprentice quests, having completed around nine of them already. Using the mite fuzz we had collected earlier, I was able to make the acorn helmet, 
meaning we now had two out of three pieces from the set. I also crafted more pebble spears, giving me five in total, as these were an amazing early game weapon. Time to explore, and I first headed to the Four Leaf Clover Cave to unlock Coupe de Gras, our first mutation, whilst also collecting some upgrade rocks in the process. While further exploring, I was attacked by a lava, which gave me a chance to show off the power of the pebble spear when thrown. As you can see, this lava didn't stand a chance. Into the hedge now, and as you can see, these giant hedge clippers are a new addition. I know what you're thinking though, hedge on day two? Are you crazy? No, well, yes, but there's a certain thing I want, and that thing is berry chunks, which I collected and then proceeded to analyse, along with some clay for some new recipes. I also made sure to loot the chest under the hedge, which gave me a meal and a couple of granola bars. Back up into the hedge now, where I entered a small rusted lab to take down the rust tea and loot a chest. Deeper into this lab, I found some healing items, but most importantly of all, a lever, which I pulled turning on the surveyor scanner, which would allow me to scan for any item that I had discovered. This is one of my favorite things to do early on and always massively helps me throughout the game. Into another broken lab now to grab some more item. And just in case you were doubting how hard woe is, just look at the damage I take from just a couple of spidling attacks. This challenge really wasn't going to be easy. Out of the hedge now, and time to take on a Bombardier Beetle. Now these guys aren't exactly easy, but with a shield and an axe, I was more than suitably equipped to take one down, giving me three parts, but sadly no boiling gland. With the berry chunks I had collected in the hedge, I was now able to make the acorn chest plate, meaning I now had the full set of acorn armour, making me feel slightly more safe. With this new set of armour, it was time for a new adventure, heading into the abandoned ant hill near the oak tree. I used my spear throwing techniques to help fight off the soldier ants, giving me plenty of new items. Once home, I made the smithing station before crafting a red ant club alongside four spiky sprigs, which most of you will think is an insanely weird decision. Let me give you an example of why I made multiple spiky sprigs. I think that clears any doubt you had in your minds. With that, it was back to the hedge to break some web sacks, and I quickly got the exact thing I wanted, a stink bug part. I made sure to grab some more berry chunks and then left to take on another bombardier. This not only completed one of my apprentice quests, but also gave me my first boiling gland, another vital component for progressing. I headed home again and built a spinning wheel and jerky rack. I also equipped cardio fan as I had just unlocked it. I used the drying rack to make some berry leather as we would need this to upgrade our tools and armor. A leaf. <laughs> After sleeping, I collected the berry leather from the rack and hung up some more chunks to dry. With a new day came new goals, and one of those was killing gnats. Not only because I had a quest for it, but also because I needed the fuzz. Using this fuzz, along with the stink bug part we'd gotten from the web sack earlier, I was able to make a gas mask, a vital piece of armour for this playthrough. With my brand new gas mask equipped, I decided to take on our first stink bug. This completed yet another quest, while also giving me three stink bug parts. I then used the gas mask to enter the haze to collect bodies of bugs, giving me free parts. I also used camera mode to remove the fog, so that I could see where things were. This is a pro tip for any of you newer players. This allowed me to find the stink bug part, which meant I now had four total. This was the perfect amount to craft the insect hammer. This meant on day four, I'd already overcome a huge obstacle, collecting molars. Once you start getting these, the game slowly becomes slightly easier as they allow you to increase your maximum health, stamina, mutations, healing, and food drain. And I was getting hungry a lot. This wolf spider didn't appreciate me stealing his molar, and while I could take it on, I instead decided to slowly back away into the water as the risk just wasn't worth the reward right now. With my first four molars, I bought an extra mutation slot and some extra max health, as I wasn't trying to die. I also purchased the meat shield mutation for yet more health. Now it was time to take on a ladybug, as I needed a head. Here I will display the true power of the spiky sprig when thrown. As you can see, the ladybug manages to get one attack off all fight, because I ran out of stamina. Sadly, I didn't get the head I needed. At this point, it's been 23 years, so I'm not surprised. But I did finish another apprentice quest. Back to the ASL now to spend even more molars on healing and max health before crafting our very first trinket. This is a new trinket called Astonishing Acid, and while it isn't very good, it's better than no trinkets at all. I took out a few more ladybugs and got more head in 5 days of grounded than 23 years of real life. <laughs> Serious? This allowed me to make the insect axe, meaning after just five days, I had tier two tools achieved. 
I was also able to make the ladybug chestplate and leggings, massively increasing my defense. Speaking of increasing defense, I put all my armor plating into upgrading this brand new armor to make it as protective as possible. I then decided to build two dew collectors as I was sick of running all the way to the oak lab every time I needed water. I also built a grinder for making slurries. With the other ladybug head I had collected earlier, I was able to make the final piece of ladybug armor, which means we now had a full set and thus the set bonus too. Using my armor along with my spiky sprigs, I took on the abandoned ant hill, which gave me enough resources to make a full set of a red ant armor. I know what you're thinking, but Paralyzer, you just made ladybug armor. Why are you downgrading? Watch and learn, little guy. I headed to the red ant hill and equipped the armor. The set bonus makes it so that red ants ignore me, meaning I could explore the whole thing without fighting any ants. This allowed me to collect the milk molar inside along with the rotten bee gear. Once at the end, I grabbed the red ant hill chip with the final piece of rotten bee gear and the mint also. I made sure to grab some eggs before I left as I would use these for brat bursts later. Back at the lab, I analyzed all of the new items we had acquired, which took me to level seven brain power already. And we were only on day six. With the red ant eggs, I was able to make a single brat burst as I hadn't enough fungal growth for any more. I decided to trash the other eggs since I didn't want them hatching in my inventory. Next, it was time to grab a bunch of clay. As you can see, this takes forever on WoW as player damage is reduced, meaning not only do you do less damage to bugs, but also when harvesting resources, which means it takes more hits to break stuff. Using this clay and the brat burst, there was only one place I was going. That's right, I built up the lab and dropped the explosive, opening up the door. I headed inside the lab to grab the pinch whacker, loot the chest and take the rotten berry charm, which would never get used. With more plates, I was able to upgrade my helmet and leggings to level five before heading back into the hedge into the lab. I grabbed the first and second pieces of the password before also grabbing the aphid figurine, unlocking stage one of Rascal Rogue. I got another molar, which is pre-broken and new in 1.3, as well as the third piece of the password. Finally, I obtained the fourth and final piece of the password, allowing me to activate the computer. I left these meals behind in the chest as I wouldn't have time to eat them before they rotted and then headed into the final room grabbing the duper disc as well as the hedge super chip. Before leaving the hedge, I made sure to grab the broodmother BLT recipe, although we wouldn't be fighting her until much later. Back to molar spending and I grabbed myself another mutation slot alongside reducing hunger and thirst drain as I was sick of gathering food already at this point. Using the silk rope gathered in the hedge, I found a new zip line that was added, so connected it to see where it went. This completed another quest, and it turns out this new zipline goes to the one that's been at the bird bath for ages. After spending seven years taking out the mosquitoes, I was able to raise the flag, completing yet another quest. I made sure to head under the hedge to loot the Rus Tees, obtaining a gold card. This is guaranteed upon killing all of them, but it still puts us one step closer to 100%. Speaking of progress, I headed to the secret hedge cave to grab the ant totem recipe alongside the rotten red ant club. I won't be using this weapon anytime soon, but I got it for analyzing and because I needed the data in here. After leaving the hedge, I decided enough was enough. I may be on woe hardcore, but I'm still good at this game. So I'm taking on a wolf spider. Ooh. You're hard. I wasn't doing much damage here, but after a lot of fighting, parrying, and patience, I was able to take down our first wolf spider, unlocking stage one of Mithridatism. This also certainly wouldn't be the last wolf spider. There would be many, many more to come. Once back at the Oak Lab, I inserted the duper disc and then gave Burgle the hedge super chip and the right anthill chip that we'd collected. With my science, I decided to unlock fiber bandage efficiency, the canteen upgrade, and the cookery, all of which would be useful at some point. Whilst killing aphids for food, this happened. This was our first gold card that was luck-based, and if they all continued like this, I'd be in for a treat. But spoiler alert, they didn't. With the hedge lab finished, I had the silk rope to make myself a gill tube, which would allow me to head into the pond. I began by grabbing some koi scales and sunken bones, but realized I didn't have enough for the bubble helm. So I headed to the super duper and spent some raw science to get some more. This allowed me to craft the bubble helm, which I desperately wanted as I didn't want to drown. That would be a really silly way to die in a hardcore world. I made sure to discover plenty of landmarks and unlock Mertine for more speed and O2. Before 
before heading deep down and using the scanner to unlock the pond lab. Once inside, I grabbed the rotten slime lantern and hit the lever, activating the breakers. I then headed out to loot the chests before going back into the water to activate the first two breakers. I grabbed a scabby and the toxicology badge before activating the third and final breaker. While here, I also grabbed the molar inside. I headed back to the lab and made sure to grab the koi statue before activating the computer. This unlocked the remainder of the lab, but also spawned a bunch of robots. When killing a taste tea, I got really lucky and got the gold card. Although this wasn't necessary as I would have gotten it anyway when completing the Black Ant Lab later. Killing the Arkars also gave me their gold card. With everything dead, I was able to grab the Pond Super Chip along with the Duper Disc before hitting the computer giving us a brand new cutscene that was added in the 1.3 update. This now unlocks a bunch of labs around the pond that are now locked upon starting a new game. I made sure to grab the Mussel Sprouts and then, before leaving the pond, headed into the cave to grab the Rotten Fin Flops to scan for more raw science and brain power. Once back at the Oak Lab, I gave Burgle the Super Chip, but then remembered that this is possibly the worst chip in the game, unlocking almost nothing useful. Once home, I made sure all of my ladybug armor was upgraded to level 5. Back into the pond now, where I killed a water boatman and got the gold card. Like, literally two kills, and I got the gold. Nice. Next, I headed to the mint box, as I knew we'd need candy for crafting elemental weapons later. Obviously, trinkets aren't required for 100%, so I wouldn't be focusing on trying to get them all in this world. Are you kidding me? Into the haze now, where I first headed to the field station to grab the data item, along with more granola bars. I then headed deeper and discovered the haze lab, although I didn't plan to go through this entrance as I had no bombs on me. Instead, I headed to the exposed pipe as I had all the gear necessary to enter via the rear. I even made a bunch of slime mold torches so that you can see what's going on. I headed down the passage to grab the science, mega milk molar and sewage scabby, and then went in the other direction, taking me into the haze lab. When entering, I was greeted by some rather explosive guests. They didn't last very long. I headed deeper and grabbed the Weevil statue before looting a chest and pulling the lever, unlocking the remainder of the lab. I headed to the danger room and it was time for our first important fight, the infected ladybug. To start with, it was chill and then all the other infected bugs appeared. My first task was to run around breaking all of the haze fungus to make sure it didn't blow up in my face. From there, this was pretty easy as I just ran around and threw spiky sprigs at the ladybug until eventually it died, killing all of the mites and larvae with it. Except one, the little cheating son of a... This unlocked Truffle Tussle and allowed me into the final room to grab the last duper disc alongside the super chip, three bat bursts, and last but not least, three granola bars. While in this area, I headed into the trash can to collect data, molars, and other useful items. You know when I said I didn't need trinkets? Yeah, apparently the game heard me, because I've never seen look like this before. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly... I can't stand this. I made sure to eat three spicy shards, unlocking stage two of spicy safety, one of my favorite mutations in the game. Next, I headed north to the exposed pipe and used my tier two dagger to break the roots, allowing me to get the Minotaur maze key. With this acquired, I used one of the brat bursts we'd obtained from the haze lab to break the rock, causing the shovel to fall, giving me access to the picnic table. Entering the field station on top gave me a data item, but also meant I had enough locations to unlock natural explorer stage two, making traveling around the yard much quicker. I headed into the maze, making sure to grab the crusty roly-poly leggings and roll the dice onto a 20 to unlock the second stage of Coupe de Gras. Finally, I used the key to unlock the chest. This completed yet another quest for opening a toy chest and allowed me to collect the Picnic Burgle Chip alongside some upgrade rocks and a scabby. With all of the molars I had collected, I unlocked my fifth and final mutation slot. I've been spending molars on other stuff too, as you can see. Once back at the Oak Lab, I put the duper discs into the Super Duper, meaning it was maxed out now. I also gave Burgle the chips we had collected, meaning I could now unlock the oven, as well as the mint mace, feather roofs, haze cookbook, buff lungs, and zip lines. Talk about a spending spree. From spending science to spending resources, it was time to make some statues, which gave me the first level of coziness. I then set up a zip line to the pagoda at the pond and made sure I had easy access inside. Obviously, I had to build two zip lines to account for the fact I didn't yet have the zipper. After a full day of moving, I was able to settle into our new base, the pagoda. I even added a fireplace and chimneys for more coziness. Now that the base was taken care of, I had other business to attend to. I upgraded my armor down the sleek path to levels 6, 8, and 6, 
meaning we could no longer repair it until the assistant manager was beaten, as we didn't have the glue masher. I also upgraded the pinch whacker to level 5, making it as powerful as possible. If I need to beat the assistant manager to repair my gear, then I guess there's only one place to go, the black ant lab. Once inside, I began by fighting some black ants, as I would need their parts for some improved gear. There was food all over the floor in this place, by the way. What a mess. I headed deeper and used a bomb to open the entrance to the lab, allowing me to scan my hand before taking out a Taze T, which enabled me to unlock clearance level A. Next, I headed down to the storage room to grab all of the goodies, which included a bunch of granola bars. I also made sure to loot the chest, giving me even more goodies, including more brat bursts. I gained clearance level B before heading deeper for even more loot, because I'm a literal loot goblin. Boss fight time. In terms of mutations, it's hard to pick five good ones, but I went for spicy safety, cardio fan, coup de gras, meat shield, and buff lungs. Most others don't really help in this fight, to be honest. Here we go. I started by taking out the minions before heading for the big, bad boss. As you can see, the pinch whacker is pretty good in this fight for damage. Round two of minions, what's that? Helicopter, helicopter. Hmm, that was strange. Anyways, from here on it was smooth sailing. The boss didn't even activate the Tesla turrets once, and I was easily able to take it down, getting the shocking dismissal mutation, 1000 raw science, the key card, and of course, the gold card. This key card allowed me to unlock the door and get the black ant super chip, meaning we now had all four super chips. I left the lab via the sandbox as it was nighttime, and this allowed me to get into the outpost and grab the sandbox burgle chip, along with a chest filled with even more goodies. Once I made it back to the Oak Lab safe and sound, I gave Burgle both of these chips and then opened the ASL and went on a massive spending spree again, grabbing everything we would need for even more weapon and armor upgrades. Before leaving the lab, I used the keycard to open the secret room, allowing me to get the zipper and a chest filled with plates to help me along my upgrading journey. Once home, I used my new recipes to level up my helmet to level seven sleek and my leggings to level eight sleek, meaning I had pretty high defense on a strong armor set. I then added some pallets for the sake of storage and built the glue masher, which I would soon need to repair my gear. This completed yet another quest, whilst also unlocking the third level of coziness in my base. I built myself a mite trophy and a stuffed mite, and activated both of these, completing four more quests, giving me loads of raw science. We'd been making amazing progress so far, so it's time to take a break in the pond. I headed into the cave and took out the diving bells, which would allow me to collect the molars inside. Killing the diving bells in this cave is important, as you need the oxygen to make sure you don't drown. This cave has a bunch of loot, including a backpack and a scabby. Little quest update, we had made it to quest 33, which has changed since 1.3 released, as it wanted me to kill an orb weaver with spicy damage. Time for a live myth busting. Will the quest complete if I use my fists with the char char charm? If you said yes, then you were correct. It does count which means another quest is complete. With the assistant manager keycard, I was now able to access some new labs inside of the pond, starting with the one under my base, which had a few upgrade rocks inside. The next lab I headed to contained the left elf charm, along with a button that I pushed to unlock the stump lab. Back into the caves now, where for some reason there were no diving bell spiders. I think this was a glitch of some kind, but they came back later in the video. Anyways, I got the mossy key and then headed back to Burgle only to realize I forgot to open the chest. So I hopped back in the water and used the key on the chest, opening it up and grabbing the chip and the molar inside. Then I headed back to Burgle to finally give him the chip and use it to unlock nothing, because everything this chip unlocks is useless, to be honest. With the lower yard all but complete, it was time to head to the upper yard via a rather unique route. I made sure to grab a scabby on the way up and headed straight for the termite nest. Once there, I used my pinch whacker to help me take out some termites. It's safe to say, this weapon was starting to drop off in damage, and it was taking a while to take them down. But slowly, one by one, I eliminated the termites, getting the two chompers I needed from a soldier, which I would soon use. I headed higher to the spider nest under the tarp, as I wanted the molar. But while fighting some spiderlings, a wolf spider decided to glitch through the floor to come and attack me. After he'd finished doing the cha-cha slide, and I'd finished cleaning my pants, we went into battle, but there was only going to be one obvious winner. My prize, the Milk Molar. 
I put the termite parts into the resource analyzer, and we had already made it to level 11 brain power, meaning we were doing very well. While here, I also spent some molars on more upgrades and used a glider to get into the axe handle and collected the 500 raw science inside. Before leaving, I made sure to grab the bag outside the nest for five free twinkling shells. I wasn't going far though, just around the corner in fact, to the ladybird area. I needed to take these out as I was going to need loads of tough gunk for the new weapons, and these guys drop quite a lot. Plus, the shells couldn't hurt for eventually making armor plates later down the line. While running home, I unlocked the third and final phase of cardio fan, maxing it out, making my stamina regeneration faster than ever. Once home, I tried to repair my pinch whacker, but had no repair glue, so I had to use my all new glue masher for the first time, but I could barely even afford to make any repair glue. He's broke. He's a brokey. Once that was sorted, I made the termite axe using the other resources we had gathered, meaning we had our first tier 3 tool, which I also upgraded straight to level 5. I then made myself the black ant shovel, and saw that I just needed red ant parts if I wanted the black ant shield. Shh, don't say a word. We've got a wild one. We got it! Quest complete and pet obtained. He teleported over to the base, but I didn't have the pet house recipe unlocked yet due to a lack of mushroom bricks. I made myself a black ant shield and we set out on a quest. Mission, get the pet house. I began by heading over to the sandbox as I would need more sizzle resist for the charcoal that we needed for the oven. Unfortunately, the very first ant line I found killed my pet aphid. Mission failed, we'll get him next time. Okay, so that didn't exactly go to plan, but I still needed the armor regardless. The first gave me three parts. While fighting another, I missed one walk and it cost me over half of my health. These guys were no joke. Using my new shovel, I made sure to grab the melted moat key, which I then used to open the chest in the moat, giving me the salt morning star recipe. Fun fact, the molar in this chest got removed and replaced by the one in the hedge that's pre-broken. Fighting another antlion, I yet again missed a block, went almost at full health and nearly died. This was getting too close for comfort. It was lucky I had ladybug armor so that I could not only survive the hit, but also heal to full in a single smoothie. I'd brought the other resources needed with me to make the antlion helmet and chest plate, meaning we had two out of three pieces of the armor. With that, it was time to head to the upper yard, this time using a bomb to open the proper way up, as this would just make life easier in the future. Once at the charcoal area, I equipped both pieces of armor along with the fresh defense mutation, making my sizzle resist as high as possible. Even then, I could only get one to two hits in without taking any sizzle damage. But after plenty of running back and forth, I was able to get enough charcoal for the oven at least. Once home, I placed down the grave to commemorate our late pet aphid and paid my respects. Anyways, enough of the sappy crap. I built myself an oven and cooked some mushroom bricks along with two mint globs. I would have made some salt globs too, but I was missing a key ingredient. Salt. Off to the upper yard again now, where I was heading into one of the most dangerous caves in the game on day 17. Have I lost my mind? No, quite the opposite. I used a weed stem to help boost me up to the top and get the molar, without having to worry about the widow inside. Spoiler alert, I actually never went back to this cave again, not even for the science or upgrade rocks. Speaking of molars I needed, I remembered that I had the tier 3 axe, so I headed to chop down the roots and enter this cave. Here, I found a skeleton with the intern badge, but more importantly, the milk molar bottle with a huge five milk molars. This would be amazing for new upgrades. Also using my new tier three axe, I was able to collect some pupa leather, which would be massively useful for a bunch of tier three recipes. While running around in this area, I saw some very dangerous enemies. I won't be messing with them for a long time. Don't worry, they scare me. A lot. On day 17, while collecting food, I was lucky enough to get the Weevil Gold card. That means we've been lucky on three different passive creatures thus far. But trust me, it wasn't going to stay this way. Once my mushroom bricks had finished cooking, I was able to make myself the pet house. Oh wait, it's already dead. The real reason I made this was for coziness in all honesty. On the plus side, my spicy globs had finished cooking, so I was able to make my first elemental weapon, the spicy termite axe. And what a weapon this would be. Trust me. Quest update. At this point, we'd finished about half of the apprentice quests, and our raw science was starting to build up. Back to the sandbox now to take on our first pit antlion. Again, this wasn't easy, as these guys are tanks. And as you can see, one hit was enough to do over half my health and damage. This went relatively smoothly, and once defeated, I gained access to the tunnels underneath. While inside, I made sure to grab a bunch of salt, as we'd need it for another weapon. While checking my map, I noticed that the burgle quests with markers actually show on the map. 
I had no clue this was a thing in 1.3, but apparently it is, which is really nice for those struggling to find the right locations. Anyways, tangent aside, it's back to our scheduled antlion killings, although during this fight a wolf spider snuck up behind me. Luckily, they can't get into the pits, so I was relatively safe. Once the antlion was taken care of, I also made sure to take care of the wolf spider. With all my new molars, it was time for some upgrades, boosting my max health and max resource stack size. We were doing a good job of collecting them. Speaking of collections, I now had enough resources to craft the antlion leggings, meaning we had collected the full set. This would massively help to reduce the sizzle in the future. I instantly upgraded all of the antlion armor to level 7 bulky, as we would need this later on for a certain defense. Since we had a bunch of new raw science, I decided to use the super duper to dupe some tough gunk, which allowed me to craft the mint mace and the salt morning star, two of the most powerful tier 3 weapons in the game. We had these after just 18 days of playing, and I would use them alongside others until the very final days. I, of course, had to upgrade them both to level 5 instantly, and begin cooking globs for even more upgrades. With my new weapons, I headed back to the upper yard, where a roly-poly almost took my head off with a grass blade. Thankfully, I lived, and he accidentally hit a wolf spider, causing an all-out war. The roly-poly obviously won, but the real winner here was me when I hit it once and killed it, completing yet another quest. Come on, man! That's too easy! Speaking of taking on upper yard beasts, next up was the Black Ops Beetle. This was a simple task, considering we now had the Salt Morning Star, and I made light work of it, completing yet another quest and getting myself two parts and a horn. Not bad drops for once. For the second Black Ox Beetle, I had two Ladybird Larvae helping me, which made it much easier. Although he only dropped one part, meaning we needed more. These Ladybird Larvae were no joke by the way, almost killing me here, but with the power of the Mint Mace, I was able to wipe them out, completing yet another quest. With the online armor set now complete from earlier, I was able to head back to the charcoal area and collect charcoal without having to worry about sizzling whatsoever. We would need this charcoal for all sorts, from torches to more ovens. Time for a third Black Ox Beetle, which gave me the final two parts I would need. Perfect. Back to base building now, where I first used the five globs we cooked to upgrade the Salt Morning Star to level 6, giving it a brand new effect in 1.3, which causes bleed on the third hit of a combo. I then used all those Black Ox Beetle parts we had collected to make a tier 3 hammer, meaning we now had all of the highest tier tools in the game on day 19. Speaking of days, it was time to set up another zipline, this time to the upper yard. Usually I would wait a long time to make this, but this time I decided to make it really early on as it would save me days of time traveling between the lower and upper yard. I would still need an anchor in the upper yard, but I'll sort this next time I go. You can't see much here, but I'm in the termite cave in the ravine in the upper yard. Here I use my truffle tussle on a termite to break a cracked rock as I had no bombs on me at the time. Once the termites were dealt with, I was able to grab the scabby along with some raw science, data, and finally our first tier three upgrade rock. Oh, and a mega milk molar too, I guess. Back into the termite nest now to give our new salt morning star a run and see how it fared with the all new bleed effect. I also decided getting termite parts would be an easy way to farm repair glue early on. While doing this, a wolf spider decided to come all the way down the nest. Apparently, the ones in the termite nest aren't too friendly. While in here, I made sure to grab the molar and then also got lucky enough to get the termite worker gold card. Some of you may be thinking I'm getting lucky, but remember, I need 64 gold cards in 100 days, and right now I have around 10 in 19 days, most of which were guaranteed. Of course, if we were going to finish the termite den, we would have to take down the king. This completed another quest, but sadly I was unable to get the gold card on the first attempt. With the king defeated, I was able to pillage his lair for all the goodies, including upgrade rocks, a molar, and of course the woodpile burgle chip. Before heading back to the lower yard, I made sure to build the zipline anchor and attach it so that we could easily travel between lower and upper. We were back in the lower yard now, specifically in the lava cave, where I took out all of the larvae with ease thanks to my spicy axe and just so happened to get the gold card. The real reason I was here though was to blow up the rock, allowing me to delve deeper and get the scabby and mega milk molar underwater. Back home, Home and with five more globs comes another cool effect. My mint mace is now level six, giving it an AoE minty attack. And let me tell you, this makes it insanely good, as I found out all throughout this 100 days. It's always been amazing, don't get me wrong, but now it's just on a whole new level. Just as I'd predicted, we now have over 100 termite parts, so we're going to be fine on repair glue for quite a while. I headed back to the oak lab to give Burgle the woodpile chip, 
and then used the science to unlock the candy staves and the wizard hat recipes. I upgraded my mint mace yet again, making it level 7. It would stay like that for a little while now, as I had no jewels. I also remembered to complete the zip line to the upper yard, meaning we had easy access for the remaining 80 days. While analysing a bunch more items on day 20, we gathered enough brain power to hit level 16, meaning we had achieved one of the many things we would need in order to 100% the game. We were making progress. Speaking of progress, I also made my Salt Morning Star level 7, meaning we had three different elemental weapons, all of which were extremely powerful. Day 21 is here, and I used some of the charcoal we collected earlier to make a hot tub to increase my coziness and complete a quest for some easy raw science. I also built a waft emitter, yet again, just to complete a quest. Then I placed a bunch of stuff all around the base, purely to unlock level 4 of coziness, as I needed as many new recipes as possible. Back to the upper yard again, where we first head into the big red ball cave, and collect the two supreme marble rocks, before hopping back on the ball, and onto another ledge to also grab a milk molar. I love the fun unique puzzles like this in Grounded, they spice up the game, and give you little fun challenges as you progress. Speaking of challenges, one of mine was to peep all bugs, so I got myself the moth card, and made sure to collect the molar it was sleeping by. While on the log, I also found myself Thor's Pendant, an amazing trinket which I would use for quite a long time, as it's one of the best trinkets in the game. But I did find another trinket which I liked even more later in the video. While in the upper yard, I headed to the stump lab, making sure to grab the raw signs as I fell in. I'm terrible at this game, so usually I miss it. Once inside, I made sure to grab the Mantis Kebab recipe, and after some parkour, I was able to get the right elf charm also. After even more parkour, I activated the computer, unlocking the door, and allowing me to drop down and grab the stump burgle chip, along with looting the chest and grabbing the upgrade rocks nearby. I then spent even more molars upgrading my max health, before heading up top in the stump lab to grab the molars high up. These are hard to get, especially when you open the brawny boy bin and release a bunch of wasps around here, so I wanted to collect them sooner rather than later. After that, I parkoured all the way to the top right corner of the map to break some gum and collect the sticky key, which I used to unlock the chest inside the tyre, giving me two molars and the bomb arrow recipe. I'll be honest, I cared more about the molars. Speaking of which, I spent them to reduce my hunger and thirst drain alongside increasing my healing. Once in the oak lab, I handed Burgle the chip and proceeded to unlock all the important stuff this chip gives you, like the ability to craft tier 3 upgrade materials. With this unlocked, the first thing I did was max out my Ladybug armor to level 9 for maximum defense. Next, I upgraded my Spicy Terma Axe to level 7, and then I made myself a Fire Ant Shield, which in my opinion is the best shield in the game. It makes it so that when blocking, you have a 20% chance to reduce enemy defense by 15% for 10 seconds. On day 22, disaster struck. A raid. And not only that, but it was mosquitoes. Are you serious right now, bro? Luckily, this was my first ever base raid, so I only had to deal with three regular mosquitoes. But trust me, it was going to get worse. This prompted me to make the repair tool, which I then obviously used to repair my base. Luckily, nothing got completely broken. While taking out Red Ants, I got the gold card after just 59 kills. Since I was in the area, I then went over to the mixer and built a very basic defense. This mixer was absolutely no trouble, and I was even lucky enough to pick up a Lawn Mike gold card towards the end. Once finished, I got 600 raw science for a quest, on top of the 2.5k for completing the mixer. Not to mention unlocking stage 1 of Guard Dog, which would help with future defense events. Back home now, and I used the ant eggs I'd collected to make five more brat bursts, which also completed yet another quest. I then used our oven to make three broodmother BLTs for later. While here, I hopped into the pond to collect some crow feathers and got the fancy fletchling trinket. I swear this trinket is one of the most useless ones, but it follows me in every playthrough I do. I collected my BLTs from the oven and even made some charcoal ash just so I could analyse it because I wanted to get maximum brain power. I headed back to the upper yard to loot some more caves, and while killing a ladybird, I was lucky enough to get the gold card. Nice. I collected the supreme marble rock and then threw a bomb at the rock. What a weird glitch, my game reloaded itself. Anyways, I threw a bomb at the rock and it worked, first try, perfectly. This allowed me to get all the goodies in the cave, including some quartzite and a milk molar. While in the upper yard on day 24, I decided to do something different. I equipped my full antlion armor and changed around a few mutations as I had decided it was time to try the Kultana defense. 
Now, usually I'd do this a lot later, but I had the Mint Mace and Antlion Armor, and I really wanted this weapon for the Broodmother fight. Now, the Mint Mace obliterates everything with its new effect, and I was easily taking down the Larvae. Whenever my Sizzle got high, I'd just eat a Mint Shard, as for those who don't know, Mint Shards reduce your Sizzle level when eaten. These made it much easier not to sizzle, and thus getting this recipe was very easy, with it taking almost no damage in the process. This also finished yet another quest, giving me more raw science. Taking on the Kultana defense had given me confidence against Ladybird Larvae. Too much confidence. So I headed to the Ladybird Larvae cave, and quickly got ganged up on by four Larvae, almost losing my life. I then got a good grip on them, but one snuck around behind me and almost killed me yet again. But I took my time and came out on top, getting an upgrade rock in the process. I headed deeper into the cave, but there were too many, so I had to run away. Run away! Run away! Run away! Oh. Once home, I made myself the spicy Coltana. It's probably my least favourite weapon out of the four elemental ones in the game, but I needed it for a specific fight which would come soon. I made sure to upgrade it to level 5 of course, and then headed back to the upper yard to the fire ant hill. This is yet another dangerous place in the yard, but the Mint Mace was even more deadly, absolutely obliterating Fire Ant soldiers, allowing me to collect the plethora of upgrade rocks that they were protecting. I headed deeper, grabbed myself a Milk Molar, Scabby, and a Marble Upgrade Rock, and this led me into the Fire Ant Hill itself. I, Parkour Master, was able to complete the parkour to the Mega Milk Molar on the very first try, and then deeper into the hill, I randomly got the Fire Worker Ant Gold card, adding another to the collection. I went back to base to make myself the Spicy Staff, which I instantly upgraded to level 5. I then spent the molars we had collected, and as you can see, we'd collected around 75% of all molars at this point, which was really good. I made sure to upgrade my Coltana to level 6 for its special bonus effect. This essentially increases your parry window and increases damage after parrying. Time to set up our mutations. I'm going with Shocking Dismissal, Mithriditism, Spicy Safety, Cardiofan, and Meat Shield to make sure I take as little damage as possible. Broodmother time, the second boss on the world so far. I made sure to peep her on her way down. The first few combos dealt massive damage, but boss's defense increases as their health decreases, so it wouldn't stay like this. This caused a very early Spidling summon, which was wiped out by a single shot of the spicy staff. When the second wave of Spidlings came, the Spidlings yet again were wiped out instantly, but the juniors survived, and I needed multiple shots to take them out, but nothing I couldn't handle. Overall, by the end of the fight, this was pretty easy, and there wasn't a point where I almost died. The fight was a success, completing a quest and giving me a bunch of Broodmother parts too. But sadly, no gold card. The first time was so nice, I had to do it twice. Getting more drops, but again, no gold card. Third time's the charm, as I killed her once more, making it three times total, but sadly, no gold card. Maybe next time, I headed home and made the chest of the Mother Demon. A massive upgrade and our first late game piece of armour. I made sure to upgrade it to Sleek level 9 instantly. On day 27, I headed back to the Haze to farm the Fungus, in an attempt to get the Fungal Charm Trinket. We didn't need this for 100%, but I wanted it so that I could take on a certain enemy later, without risk of death. Sadly though, we didn't get it on this attempt. Whilst in the Haze, I made sure to raise the banner on top of the Weed Killer Peak, but I wouldn't plug the Haze yet, as I didn't want to release the Beast. I headed home and crafted 3 Berry Leather, I know this isn't an efficient thing to do, but I had a quest for it. Even when doing it, the quest didn't complete, which was really annoying, as I just wasted a bunch of berry chunks for nothing. Since I always have a surplus of armor plates, I decided to upgrade my Diving Helm to level 7 Sleek, and my Gas Mask to level 7 Sleek also, giving them more defense and extra buffs. On day 28, I set our Waft Emitter on this log, which is my favorite spot for enemies, as it was time to farm gold cards. We were 28 days in, and I was really far behind on my collection. Considering I had the spicy termite axe, these raids were actually really easy, and they gave me a little bit of raw science as well, which would help us later on. After just a few raids, I was able to get myself the Orb Weaver gold card, and then within the same raid at the very end, I was also able to get myself the Orb Weaver Junior card, meaning I had knocked two off the list already. After 28 days, we were on 17 gold cards, which put us on schedule to get them all in 100 days, apart from the fact about five of these were literally guaranteed. Up next, we have the infected bugs in the waft emitter. Now these guys aren't that hard to kill as long as you're patient, but I did a pretty hard raid and got 40 raw science in return. 
so they're basically a scam. Back to the upper yard now, where discovering the bomber baseball bat unlocked the third and final stage of Natural Explorer, giving me even more of a speed boost. Once I'd climbed up, I went to the giant scabby on the table and used my hammer to open it up, only to realise I didn't have the fuse. Ah oh well, at least I can collect the toenails while I'm up here. All four of them, as we need them later for weapons and the final defence. I headed all the way back to the oak lab to talk to Burgle and get the replacement fuse, and then all the way back to the giant scabby to install it, almost forgetting to push the button as always. Weirdly, when I checked the ashtray, three of the toenails had already respawned. What the hell? Now that that mess was all sorted, I could use the hand scanner to enter the Undershed lab and collect all of the goodies on the shelves inside. I also made sure to grab the frostbitten recipe, which unlocks the fridge. Oh god, you wouldn't belong getting frostbitten. Once inside, the first place I headed to was the Scarab Pipe. Killing them completed a quest and gave me a total of 10 shells, which is a really good number from 4 Scarabs. It's worth noting these guys always die in one hit as of 1.3 to stop you from stealing shells using Rascal Rogue or Sticky Fingers. Whilst inside, I made sure to collect as many molars as I could without going near the dangers below. Back to somewhere more chill like the Red Ant Hill where I was able to pick myself up the Red Soldier Ant Gold card. I then headed to the Stink Bugs nearby where I was lucky enough to pick up that gold card too. Things were looking great. Next, I headed to the sandbox and built to the Burgle marker as it was one of my active quests and there was also a molar up here I could collect too. Since I was in the area, I also went back to the picnic table to grab the thousand raw science inside the can that I'd completely forgotten about earlier. Once home, I went back to my waft emitter as we still needed the infected gold cards. After a few raids, I managed to get the infected ladybug gold card, which unlocked the first stage of Trapper Peeper, meaning we had 20 gold cards in 31 days. Let's do a little molar check. I spent a few more and was currently missing 14 milk molars along with 6 megas. Back to gold card farming. Here's the technique I used for the gnats, dropping spoiled meat slurry on the ground to attract them, which allowed me to kill them much quicker than with a bow and arrow. It also meant I could cook them as I kill them for free food. When killing these gnats, I did notice a bunch of red soldier ants nearby. Not sure why they were here though, as I'm near the squirt's milk carton, which is nowhere near the ant nest. Back home now, and I made our first fridge, completing yet another quest, but also to store all of the innocent gnats we had just killed. Here's a gold card update on day 31. We have 20 cards, and I'd say at this point we're doing really well. I smelted my first five mighty jewels with the twinkling shells from earlier, and used them on my favourite weapon so far, the mint mace. I then crafted a black ox crossbow for... uh-oh. Not again. I got my brand new mint mace at the ready, and luckily it was able to deal with the mosquitoes, with only a couple of things getting broken, which wasn't too bad. Speaking of mosquitoes, I was distracted by one while killing gnats, which caused them to eat the spoiled meat slurry, taming it. I wouldn't worry though, as this pet didn't last very long, but I did get a new pet memorial for decoration. This would look perfect on my fireplace. I also made sure to make some basic low-level arrows for my new crossbow. Back into the haze now, where I was still farming gold cards, and I was lucky enough to get the infected Might gold card, adding another to the collection. And since I was in the area, I decided to head into Dan Hamster's cave to collect the Syndrome Scabby, as well as pay my respects. There was a reason I wanted this crossbow, as you'll see right now, when I snipe this meaty nut out of the sky and get the gold card. Now this one's a 10% chance as of 1.3, so I knew it would be very easy to get. Back home again, Again now where I upgraded my gas mask to level 9. This was an expensive choice, but I would need all the defense I could get in the late game. I then headed over to my waft emitter to farm gold cards again, where I was able to pick up the black soldier ant. For the record, these are taking a lot of kills, I'm just cutting all the footage. This one, for example, took 121 kills to get. I must have lost my mind, because I also spent 10 mighty globs upgrading my crossbow to level 7, a weapon I am notoriously not a fan of. While running around killing gnats, I was attacked by a water flea. I hopped out of the water and killed it, only to get the gold card upon looting it. 31 kills. Not bad. Speaking of picking up random gold cards, I killed a ladybug as I walked past, and got this gold too. This time, just 26 kills. This must have used up all my luck, because it took a long time to get this Bombardier gold card. Over 200 kills, just spamming raids over and over to get the silly thing. On day 36, I decided it was time to gather a bunch of mushrooms, as we were going to need a lot for the defense events later on. I also spent 4,000 raw science on the acorn turret recipe, just so that I could build it and complete a quest giving me 600 raw science. But according to girl math, this counts as progress. Speaking of quests, here's where we're at. 38 was bugged, 
but we've completed around 80 quests already. These don't need to be completed for 100%, but the science you get massively helps. When it comes to science, we had around 80,000, so I decided it was time to unlock all of the cookbooks in the shop. This allowed me to cook some tier 3 meals, completing yet another quest. But our next quest was very dangerous, and I wasn't ready to face any wasps just yet. I made sure to use the grinders to grind up the toadstools we had farmed earlier, and then use my oven to cook them into mushroom bricks. Speaking of quests, I managed to make it to a banner in the upper yard, completing yet another. I then headed to the Moldor castle and was attacked by a tiger mosquito. Luckily, my mint waste was very powerful, and even more luckily, I was able to get the gold card after just 10 kills. I built a little clay ramp to get into the castle, and this allowed me to raise the flag on top, completing yet another quest. I went down inside, but I obviously couldn't open the door just yet. Speaking of things I couldn't do, I was able to peep the widow and widowling, but I wouldn't dare go near them, not yet anyways. These new widows scared me. On day 38, it happened. I made a rusty spear and upgraded it down the sour path. We finally had our first sour weapon. The reason I do this is because it one-shots everything underwater when thrown. Back to Waftemitter farming now, and I was going for roly-polies and sickly roly-polies, as they both spawn in these raids, thankfully. It didn't take long for me to get the roly-poly gold card. As you can see here, only nine kills. You're probably thinking I'm getting really lucky at this point, but... Just wait for some of the numbers of kills you're going to see later. I do get unlucky, I promise. I next headed to the hedge to do only our second mixer. I was building the defense using the mushroom brick we had recently smelted, of course, as this is very durable. Luckily, I had all the gold cards from creatures in this raid, so I wasn't too worried about that. I just wanted to complete it. This lava jumped over my walls, but once he was dealt with, this was an absolute breeze, and I was able to collect my reward of 2.5k raw science. I headed back to the haze now, and was lucky enough to get the infected gnat gold card. If we speed up the footage here, you'll see I go into the lab to farm for the fungal charm, and when I come out, the next enemy I kill is the infected lava, which also gives me the gold card. I believe this was the first and only time we got back-to-back -back gold cards from enemies in this world. The main reason I was in the haze though was to prepare for the mixer which was going really well i started it up and this yet again was really easy these mushroom brick walls were very durable and i was successful on the first try getting yet another 2.5k raw science this also unlocked the second stage of guard dog which would help not only with the mixers but also waftemitter raids and base defenses too 41 days in now and i decided to head back to the coupe de gras cave where we collected our first ever mutation as i wanted the tier 3 upgrade rocks that are found inside then it was off to the abomination totem cave to grab the tier 3 rocks inside too along with the abomination totem recipe next i headed back to the upper yard and used a bomb arrow to destroy the gum in the toolbox giving me the sticky fingers trinket this wasn't essential to the playthrough but was a cool addition to the collection regardless while in the upper yard, I headed to the porch to farm black worker ants and managed to get the gold card after 169 kills. Nice. After, I dropped down to the green shield bug area and took our first ever one out, giving me some parts and super stink sacks for the first time. I made sure to analyse these for some free raw science. On day 43, I decided to make the journey to the top of the laser in order to grab the Hyper Blaster Scabby, one of the final ones I needed and one of the most annoying to get. Back to the upper yard again and into the Moldork moat where I was killing spiny water fleas. I know what you're thinking. He's going to get the gold card. Wrong. I spent ages killing these guys just for my first piece of pond moss, a vital ingredient which can only be gotten from these guys unless you've killed a widow, which I wasn't prepared for yet. Once home, with all of the resources I had been gathering, I made myself one of my favourite weapons in the game, the Toenail Scimitar. I upgraded it to level 5 before taking it to the Super Duper and spending 2600 raw science to get a second one. This allowed me to upgrade one down the fresh upgrade path while saving another for later. After a lot of tadpole farming in the pond, I was finally able to get the gold card. This one took me 124 kills so only slightly unlucky, I guess. I continued upgrading my scimitar down the mint path, and then upgraded the other down the sour path to level 7, with the fresh one upgrading to level 8. Both of these would be essential in different boss fights later on in the playthrough. After a lot of farming, I finally got the Nat Gold card. As you can see, this one took me 330 kills. Wow. Spoiler, this was the second most any gold card took in the entire video. Speaking of gold cards, when killing a Black Ox Beetle in the upper yard, I managed to get another after just 12 kills. 
This was bittersweet, as I wouldn't have minded getting to kill these guys to farm horns. Time for another upgrade, so I made myself the Fire Ant Helmet and upgraded it to level 9 down the bulky path. This helmet would be a nice upgrade from our previous tier 2 helmet, and would also provide a useful effect, very similar to the shield that we had made earlier. After getting one of the hardest scabbies earlier, someone in chat reminded me that one of the scabbies I hadn't got yet was one that was right above me the whole time. So I built up using the new quarter clay foundations and got to the top of the light, allowing me to collect the aerobic scabby. While at the termite hill, this happened. <coughs> the reason I was here was for a genius plan. For those who don't know, there are widowling web sacks under the tarp. So I decided to break them and use the gum trinket from earlier to steal from the widowlings, as this has a chance to give you black widow fangs. You smart. You very smart. It didn't take long for me to steal my very first one, and when killing my first ever Widowling, I was also able to get the gold card. This would be the only enemy that I would get the gold card after one kill that wasn't guaranteed. By the time I was done, I'd obtained four Widow Fangs for myself. I headed back to the Black Ant Hill and used a bomb arrow to collect the scabby which I had left behind earlier due to a lack of bombs. I then headed back into the Assistant Manager area to collect a piece of data I had somehow forgotten meaning I now had all data apart from the stuff in the Undershed and Brawny Boy bin. Once home, I used the Widow Fangs we had collected to make myself the Widow Leggings and upgraded them to level 9 Sleek, meaning we now had a full Tier 3 set. It only took 48 days. I made myself 5 more Brood of the BLTs as it was time. I wanted the gold card. First try we took her out easily and I was lucky enough to get the gold, meaning it had taken 4 kills total. Once home I made 3 berry leather since it had been a while since we last tried. This time it worked and I was finally able to complete the quest. While farming for the Firefly gold card I was lucky enough to get myself the giddy goop trinket. I thought nothing of it at first but little did I know this would potentially change the playthrough forever. On day 50, while preparing for the next mixer, I cut down a dandelion and was lucky enough to get our first fluffy dandelion tuft. I personally prefer using the regular tufts, but just the fact it probably took 200 plus tufts to get this was crazy. Anyways, after preparing for the next mixer, I got it going. I didn't get any cool stuff during this and barely any walls even got damaged. Completing it finished a quest for beating half of the mixers in the yard and also gave me 2500 raw science. This bee got stunned and decided to land on my head, making the first ever bee hat in Grounded. Oh, and he also dropped the gold card. Only took 137 attempts, so nothing crazy. You're probably wondering why I'm gliding to the table where the giant scabby is. We've already been here. Twice. Well, apparently two times wasn't enough to register it as a location, but on the third time, it finally worked. The game is broken, EA Sports. The game is broken. I finally decided on day 52 that it was time to add the Ever Charcoal Torch to the collection. This is by far the best torch in all of Grounded. I was back at the Fire Ant Nest to farm kills when all of a sudden I got attacked from behind by a wasp. It was fine though, and I was able to take down our first wasp giving me some new parts to analyse. When inside the nest fighting four soldiers at once, I was luckily able to get the Fire Soldier Ant Gold Card after just 28 kills. With my next boss summon in my inventory, I headed to the Super Duper and duped it as crafting these costs four Broodmother Chunks, but duping it is only a thousand raw science, so there was a choice. Spend a little science or waste a lot of time. And the choice was obvious. On day 55, I headed back into the Undershed and attempted the pipe jump, but sadly missed it. This was a good opportunity to pick up the molar, which was down here at least, and pretend like that was what I was going for. Did I just read that out loud? Whoops. For those wondering, you can escape the sinkhole area without going through the Widow Den via the route I take here, which is actually something I learned during this playthrough. For my upcoming fight, I decided to upgrade the Antlion Armor to level 9 Bulky. Now keep in mind, this is a tier 3 medium armor set, all maxed out at level 9, so you'd expect it to protect me really well. I also got some practice in with my crossbow to unlock the second stage of sharpshooter, which I'd also need for the fight. Here we go, back to the upper yard with an inventory full of salt. I used a tadpoloka pudding since it's a tier 3 meal and thus has the best and longest lasting buffs, and then use a mutation loadout of sharpshooter, cardio fan, meat shield, coupe de gras, and spicy safety. 
Spicy safety is literally useless in this fight, by the way, so I'm a moron for using that. Here we go, boss number three, the Mantis. I was going for a bow strat with my salt arrows, as this enemy literally debuffs you, even if you parry every single attack. My bow was doing decent damage, but as you can see here, the Mantis was extremely strong. It hit me two times, and I healed just before the third hit landed, which would have killed me instantly. The big problem with this fight is the bleed is extremely strong, and you can't parry the scream she does, so you just end up with loads of parry debuffs, stopping you from parrying any attacks at all. As the fight went on, she started doing more ridiculous stuff, like jumping through the tree. And then towards the end, she hit me once, taking around 75% of my health in a single hit. I mean, what even is this attack? She hits the tree, then teleports through it into me, dealing 90% of my health instantly. Partway through the fight, I had to make myself some more salt arrows and I was completely out, and this nearly got me killed. Here she is again, moving around the tree while her claws are buried into the ground. She just breaks all laws of physics, I swear. Eventually, after several close calls and almost a heart attack, I was able to beat the Mantis. Wow, I thought this would be easy, but instead I almost lost my life on day 56 to a boss I didn't even think would be that hard. Little did I know, the later boss fights would only somehow get even harder. I made sure to loot her and got some decent drops. Speaking of good drops, I killed myself a Ladybird Lava and finally got the gold card. This one took 176 kills. As you can see, the unlucky cards are starting to show themselves after all the good luck we got early on. Speaking of hard to get, on day 57, I finally got the Grub Gold card after a massive 306 kills. I'm not joking, I've been digging these guys up for 30 days straight. Speaking of golds, here's a little update. 58 days in now, and we have a whopping 40 gold cards out of 64. Meaning we're definitely ahead of schedule, but the ones we have left were some of the hardest in the game. Oh great, another mosquito raid. This one had a lot more mosquitoes than previous, and my base took a beating. I repaired everything, but it still cost me loads of resources, including losing a zipline. Time for some more armor changes as I made a roly-poly helmet and leggings, both bulky level 9, as I needed more defense for certain enemies. While farming infected raids, I picked up the infected weevil gold card and broke the waptometer, instantly ending the raid so I didn't have to fight the rest of the creatures. This one took 75 kills, so slightly lucky, but still quite a lot. Since it was now December when filming this, there were some beautiful Christmas lights along the house, which I thought were a very cute touch. This also meant the monthly exclusives were in the store, so I was able to unlock some limited time items, which you still can before the month of December ends. Anyways, back to gold card farming, where I finally got the sickly roly-poly, with this one taking 42 kills, I'm just thankful that you can get this via the Waftometer raids now, because before, there were only four on the map, and they would take ages to respawn. On day 61, it was time for a dangerous adventure. I used a glider to travel across to the pipe, and then further to avoid the widow, allowing me to get into the Undershed lab. This place is cool, but this annoying widowling somehow got in and envenomed me. I made sure to collect the plethora of data inside before hitting the switch, unlocking the rest of the lab. Mutation time. I'm running Blade Master, Parry Master, Coupe de Gras, Annihilator for the summons, and Shocking Dismissal. But before that, we have a show from the Bee and the Mant. Sadly, as you can see, the Bee lost, but I was determined not to meet the same fate, opting to use a fresh Toenail Scimitar, which the Mant is weak to on both accounts, making this very powerful. I know a lot of people agree that this fight is pretty easy, but I still have to concentrate, as on Woe, even a single hit could be fatal. But after a pretty short-lived fight and a lot of parrying, I was finally able to defeat the Mant. This gave me the Mansterious Stranger mutation, as well as a thousand raw science, and of course the gold card, putting us one step closer. Once in the final room, I made sure to collect the glorious recipe, as well as the Tully Scabby scheme. I scanned my hand on the scanner, which unlocked Dr. Wendell Tully. I talked to him and then grabbed the grilled science from the fridge. But before giving it back to him, I had to steal all of his food supply. Sorry, Wendell. I handed him the grilled science and then headed out of the lab. On the way out, I made sure to grab the Wendell figurine, which unlocked the second phase of a rascal rogue. With Wendell free, I could now place the embiggening cell in the Java Matic, and then head to the top to also insert the ingredients. 
This allowed me to hit the button, which spawns a few enemies that I quickly took out before repairing the mixer modules. I talked to Tully and picked the let's get started option in the dialogue, causing the Javmatic storage room to open up. I headed inside and began looting everything. There's so many goodies in here that I had to make two trips just to bring it all home. Not forgetting the Mant figurine, of course. Once that was sorted, it was time to head to another area unlocked by Tully the mysterious lab. I killed the sneaky ant inside and then headed in to grab the moldy recipe and all of the orc receivers. I also looted the chest for some supreme rocks before finally grabbing the mold orc figurine, meaning I was missing one more. On day 62, I spent some more molars, meaning we were now missing five milks and two megas. Luckily, I knew where they all were. And in terms of quests, we got a daily quest to craft five boss sauce. Which was funny, because I haven't even beaten the Wasp Queen yet. But we're still stuck at quest 81 of killing some very dangerous enemies. Once home, I made myself the Moldork statue, along with Wendell's ugly little raisin head. This got me close to level 5 coziness, which I wanted to unlock at least for the recipes. I added a Broodmother trophy, two Mant Braziers from the Glorious Recipe, and finally a Broodmother Chandelier, along with a bunch of other furniture, which finally tipped me over the edge and got us level 5 coziness, unlocking a bunch of new furniture, most important of which was the Petal Bed. Speaking of important things, I headed back to the sandbox to grab the Supreme Marble Rock I had missed, and also picked up the crusty Roly-Poly Breastplate, which I just kept leaving behind. While here, I made sure to set up the Sandbox Mixer, which obviously only has antlions. As you can see, this was really easy, and on the first attempt, I was able to... Wait a second, did I just fail on purpose? Yes, yes I did. Let me explain. In Grounded, there's no way to farm antlions using the waft emitter. You simply have to wait for them to respawn in the sandbox. But if I fail the mixer over and over, I can keep killing as many antlions as I want until I get the gold card. But after a full night of farming, I still didn't have it and I was out of water. So I had to leave. We'll try again another time. Speaking of trying for golds, I was able to get the spiny water flea gold a little later on. This one took a whopping 247 kills, one of the higher amounts in the world, but that was fine as they were easy to farm. Back underwater now, and can anyone please explain how to pick up this marble in the pond depths tunnel leading to the mossy key? Spoiler alert, you can't, and it annoys me so much for no reason at all. Back in the upper yard now, stalking my prey. It saw me, but I was sure I could catch it. What? Where did it go? Man, screw this game. Guess who's back at the sandbox? Failing more and more. And with 142 kills on the antlion, I'd run out of water again. So I had to leave the sandbox. On the way out, this happened. Well, there's a will, there's a way. If I get it now, I'm gonna be by the way, because I'm gonna have to do the entire mixer again. So it was back to the mixer one last time, where I was able to finally complete it, giving me 2500 raw science and putting us one step closer to 100%ing the game. On the same night, after getting the antlion, I was able to get the firefly after 99 kills. Talk about a 1% chance. The next day, I headed to the termite lair to take down some soldiers and managed to get this gold card too, this time after just 82 kills. And on that same night, I picked up the dust mite gold card after 272 kills. We were on a hot streak. Time for some waft emitter raids. Now these are just flying enemies, so I had to use my special technique in the upper yard, the Javamatic. Don't ask me why, but these enemies are really dumb and they attack the mixer modules instead of attacking the waft emitter and they can't even break the mixer modules, so it was chill. After a while, my mosquito kill count bugged out at 166, something I've never experienced before. But just a few moments later, I was able to get the gold card, despite the counter still saying 166 for some weird reason. Day 69, woohoo! And I had 69,000 raw science. Nice. So I decided it was time to get some unlocks in by buying everything except the sign sets, leaving us with 58,000. I noticed we could afford to empty it, so I thought, screw it, why not? And blasted 40k into sign sets, leaving us with 18,000 raw science, but more importantly, an empty science shop for now. Back to farming for gold cards, and while fighting ticks, I was able to pick up another. This one took me 131 kills, so a little on the unlucky side here. On day 70, I decided to make a new weapon, the Sour Staff. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this weapon, 
but there's one enemy in particular that I like using it against. I made sure to upgrade it to level 5, and then even started cooking some globs to upgrade it further. I then upgraded my toenail scimitar to level 9 sour, meaning it was ready for the boss it was going to take down in the future. If you guessed that the sour staff was for the moths, then you guessed correctly. We have our first victim here, and as you can see, I'm terrible at using these, as I get hit hard straight away. Staffs have a delay before parrying after shooting, which still really annoys me, and makes me not want to use them, but they're probably the best weapon for this situation. I was quickly able to take the moth down, completing one of our quests, and giving me one fuzz. Seriously? Time for a second moth. This one hit me with a dust attack, so I pulled my glider as I fell to avoid damage. I then tried to drop down, but the moth flew down after me and hit me mid-air down to 1 HP. If I kept holding my glider, it would surely catch up to me and kill me. So I unequipped it, drank a smoothie, and deployed my glider again just before hitting a grass blade, which would have killed me by fall damage if not for the glider. This was by far the closest we'd come to death in a long time, and had me shaken up for a few minutes after. I headed back up to show the moth who the real boss is, and got myself three fuzz and a scale this time. Once home, I activated a shield bug trophy and stuffed bug, meaning it was time for some more waft raids. You can now get green shield bug from waft emitter raids in 1.3 using either eight stink bug parts or two shield bug parts. This is one of the many fantastic changes as it makes it much easier to get this gold card. You can also do this with one super stink sack and a stink bug part. It was getting dark and it's time for an upgrade. So I made myself the petal bed. What makes this an upgrade, you ask? When you sleep in it, you get different buffs to any other bed. It gives you comfy energy and comfy defense buffs, which reduces stamina usage and damage taken by 10% for the whole next day. When I woke up, I made myself a termite chestplate and upgraded it to level seven sleek. Little did I know, this would become one of my most used and favorite pieces of armor throughout the entire playthrough. On day 72, I finally got one of our highest kill gold cards at a whopping 304 kills, the Diving Bell Spider. This one was a pain, not only because you can't raid them from a waft emitter, but also because they're underwater and only in the pond, so I was at constant risk of being eaten by Trudy. But luckily, I managed to avoid her. This put the Diving Bell third for most killed on the leadboard, behind the Grub and Nat. Back to the upper yard now, where I decided to use the Salt Morning Star to take on some wasps. I made sure to do it one at a time to avoid getting ganged up on. These drones are just super annoying as they keep healing, and in woe, they basically heal faster than you can even damage them. Eventually, I took it out though, finishing another quest and allowing me to get on top of the brawny boy bin. Coming up here allowed me to take down some shield bugs for a potential gold card, along with collecting 500 raw science. On the way down, I made sure to grab the power droplet. I didn't need this and would never use it. I just felt like collecting trinkets when I got the chance. Speaking of stink bugs, it's back to raids now, and during one, my fresh spear bounced off of a stink bug and went missing. I don't like it when this happens, so after failing to find it, I reloaded my last available save, as I think this is fair when my weapon is literally flung out of existence. Then, later, after a bunch more raids, I finally got the Shield Bug Gold card after just 27 kills, which was definitely on the luckier side for number of kills. Speaking of golds, here's another update on day 73. We still needed the Moth and Termite King, but had very few kills. I wasn't worried about the Wolf Spider, as I would focus on it when going for the infected version. We still also needed the Widow, which I was dreading. I wasn't too worried about either of the Wasps though. The Scarab posed a challenge, but it was possible. And then the bosses would be tough, but they have higher odds, so it seems possible. Current count is 52 out of 64, which is really good for 73 days played. Speaking of wasps, it was back to the upper yard now to make a big decision. I took down the wasps guarding the hive and then used my crossbow to shoot it down. This made the wasps slightly angry. I chose this nest in particular as getting rid of it allowed me to climb into the bush and grab the molar hidden in the branches. I took down my second wasp nest and this caused the hive to be disturbed, which could only mean one thing. I went to sleep that night and got the cutscene causing the brawny boy bin to open, releasing wasps all over the yard, but allowing me to go inside and continue to progress the game. This also completed another quest, meaning when I refreshed, I now had three even harder quests to complete, 
and another five that hadn't unlocked. With the brawny boy bin open, I headed inside and used my hammer to skip the hard part and get up top straight away. I headed inside the rocket to grab the shield solidifier, another trinket I would never use, along with the sour candy. I made sure to grab the condiment jockey scabby and then climbed the robot's face to collect the milk molar on top. I grabbed the data in the field station, which was the final piece of data I needed for 100%. I got the frosting scabby, which was number 50 on the list, meaning we now had every single one of these we needed too. While dropping down, I grabbed the forgotten burgle chip, the final one to complete the collection. I glided into the wasp nest and was surprised when the game didn't complete the quest for discovering all locations, as I thought this was the last one I needed. Regardless, I collected the recipe for the BBQ medley, which made it so that the wasps wanted me gone. Yikes. When I went to check my data, we were somehow missing the Undershed Lab as a location. You know, the place we literally walked through to kill the mant. I don't know how. Anyways, I headed back over there to discover it, and it completed the quest, giving me 4,500 raw science, a very worthwhile reward. Once back at the oak tree, I gave Burgle the chip we had just collected before heading straight to the science shop to buy everything. This set me back 5,500 raw science, but it now meant we had every single thing in the science shop unlocked ticking off another objective required for 100%ing the game. Back to my mountain of mushroom bricks I've been cooking up, as you can see, it's quite a lot. And there's a reason for that. We still have mixers left to do. More specifically, super mixers. So let's get to building. Okay, there's a couple of ants here. Right, let's get to work. Oh, okay, even more ants. And so it begins. This mixer is possibly in the most annoying spot on the entire map. I'm not even joking, for 10 minutes straight I tried to build this defense and I just kept getting attacked until eventually I managed to wipe out everything and begin construction, including blocking the entrance to the Fire Ant Hill. Overall, preparing for this mixer, I had to kill 42 Fire Worker Ants, along with all the other stuff on the screen. I think I killed more enemies preparing for the mixer than I did in the actual defense. Anyways, after all that prep work, let's get started. I was using the Mint Mace, as all enemies here are weak to it. I mean, just look at the damage output on these enemies. They don't stand a chance. Even the Roly Poly got absolutely obliterated without a chance to heal. The Giddy Goop also massively helped here, and I was able to take out large crowds with very little fuss, completing the mixer and giving me 5,000 raw science. This was probably the easiest time I've ever had doing this mixer on WoW, all thanks to the Mint Mace and Giddy Goop. Back to the Scarab Pipe now for more shells and a chance at... No way. It actually happened. One of the hardest gold cards to get. This one took just 55 Scarab kills, which is somewhat lucky. And I'm glad, because I was sure I was going to have to pull out the spicy staff to kill the ones running around the yard. With one Super Mixer conquered, it was time to prepare for another. This one's a very similar level to the one we just did, except I didn't get attacked by 17 species of insects while building it. Once I was ready to go, I equipped the Giddy Goop and began the mixer. As always, plenty of half walls for protection. Yet again, just look at the power of the Mint Mace. This thing was only level 8, but my enemies were practically immobilised, and the hardest part of this mixer was trying to jump and grab the raw science at the end. I mean seriously, they didn't even get to hit the outer wall of the mixer itself. I brought all the spare bricks back home and deposited them only to get raided by mosquitoes. Again. But this time was different. Not only were there tiger mosquitoes on top of the regular mosquitoes, but there were loads. I simply couldn't deal with them all, and half of my base got destroyed in the raid. Luckily, I had plenty of resources to rebuild it, even though it was very expensive. One more super mixer to go. For this one, I like to build a big wall by the boulder, connecting to the edge of the map. You'll see why later. When I was finished, I'd essentially built a pyramid using clover ramps with mushroom walls inside. This has allowed me to get on top quickly and take down the tiger mosquitoes that spawn in the raid. I set up a mutation loadout for the final mixer. I had Guard Dog, Natural Explorer, Cardio Fan, Whittle Wizard, and Coupe de Gras. And you're about to find out why. But first, I had to destroy the statues at our base as I was running low on supreme plating. I used this plating to upgrade my roly-poly helmet and leggings to bulky level 9 for maximum defense. Now it's time for the final mixer. I used the spicy staff to obliterate the ticks. Thanks once again to the chat during the streams for this suggestion as it worked perfectly and made this much easier. Then for the tiger mosquitoes, I just used my trusty mint mace, dealing massive damage as always. As the mixer continues, you get to see why I built a giant wall by this rock. 
It's because the shield bug is really dumb, and always goes all the way around it, which massively delays its arrival to the mixer. But it doesn't delay that final wave of mosquitoes, so I gotta go deal with those. This is the big finale to the last super mixer, but the mint mace was the biggest, baddest weapon, and conquered them all. As you can see, as the mixer is ending, the shield bug didn't even get close thanks to that wall. Stupid. This completed yet another quest for finishing all mixers, and gave me 2,500 raw science on top of the 5,000 for completing the mixer itself. Not to mention stage 3 of Guard Dog, which would be used later in the Javmatic Defense, and would also be very useful for Waftemitter raids. With all 8 mixers completed, it was time to head back to the Black Ant Hill to claim our prize. Inside, I found the Yoked Girth figurine, along with the Prod Smacker. Not forgetting the chest, which had a bunch of upgrade rocks, which, to be honest, I'd completely forgotten about. This, of course, unlocked the third and final stage of Rascal Rogue, which we'd use to steal some useful items later on. Once home, I used the new upgrade rocks to upgrade the Termite Chestplate to level 9. This is an amazing armor piece, and you'll see why over the next 20 days. Time for another boss. For mutations, I'm running Blade Master, Meat Shield, Coupe de Gras, Cardio Fan, and Spicy Safety. I ate a Black Ox Burger, and then double-checked my gear. Roly-poly helmet and leggings, and the Termite Chestplate with the Giddy Goop as a trinket. I made sure to pop a sticky, soothing syrup, as well as a Liquid Rage and Human Food to buff myself up as much as possible, and then started the fight with Director Schmechter. I'm not gonna lie to you, using the Toenail Scimitar Sour made this fight a breeze. Even when the Orc Weavers arrived, it wasn't too bad. Most of the damage I was taking was from these stupid electric balls, which were impossible to parry because they literally disappeared before he shot them, which has to be some sort of glitch. But with the power of all the debuffs, I was able to slow Schmechter down. The reason I switched up gear here, by the way, is because he's immune to shock, poison, bleed, and venom damage, so I had to change it up and go for some different debuffs. It worked well though, and Schmechter was easily defeated, unlocking the corporate kickback mutation, and then giving me the data disc along with his gold card, which adds another to the collection. From one scary enemy to another, it was time for the one I had been scared of the Black Widow. The fight started out poorly, with the first attack hitting me, but once I landed that first combo, it was done. The Widow's speed was drastically reduced, and even eating a Widowling wouldn't be enough for her. Then, my Dust Cloud from the chestplate activated, and I mean, just look at how slow she is. This is the true way to take her down. If you need a guide for this, I made a whole separate video on it recently, but I was pretty quickly able to take her down, and thus complete another quest for killing a Black Widow. When looting her, I got a single piece of Venom, which was fine, because one was all I needed. While here, I made sure to collect the Mega Milk Molar, one of the final ones we needed. Speaking of which, Quest update. I need two more molars, both guarded by Black Widows, and I need to complete other dangerous tasks as well. Using the science we had built up, I decided to dupe the Super Spider Venom for only 1,000 science per piece. I made myself a Mask of the Mother Demon, which I then upgraded to level 9 Sleek, as I could no longer use my chestplate, as I decided the Termite chestplate was the one for me. I also used the Venom to make the Widow Dagger, which I also began upgrading down the Salty Path to level 7, as this was going to be my solution to the Wasps. I found spiderlings in the hedge to max out the assassin mutation, and then upgraded the dagger even more to level 9 salty, the best it could possibly be. To test this new dagger, and because I still needed gold cards, I decided to do some wasp raids. Thankfully, I was very lucky, as I got the drone gold card after just 7 kills. This helped a lot because I hate wasp drones. They're so OP in woe, and I was just thankful to not have to worry about them again. Next, I found a bunch of wasp raids, and as you can see, after just 67 kills, I was able to get this gold too. This was on the luckier side for sure, which helped because I was going to need a lot of luck to get these remaining gold cards in just 16 days. Speaking of help, it's time for some backup, as I crafted what most consider to now be the best weapon in the game the Sour Battle Axe. Now this of course completed another quest, but I was more interested in upgrading and testing this bad boy out. So much so, I got it to level 7 straight away, as I was trusting everyone that it was truly amazing. But before we test it out, we've got to go back to the Mantis fight. Now I decided to opt for much heavier armor this time, as I didn't want to die in a single hit. The first kill was easy, but sadly, no gold card. On the second time around, she managed to glitch around the tree and get a big hit on me. Despite me having some of the best defensive armor in the game, 
game, I still took huge damage. This just shows how strong she is and how hard she is on WoW. But again, I was able to take her down with sadly no gold card as the reward. Using my new Widow Dagger, I headed back to the Moldork Castle Moat to collect a bunch of Pond Moss, which I then used to make the Assassin Mask and upgrade it to level 9 Bulky. Now I know I've made a plethora of different armour and upgraded them all at this point, but I like different armour for different enemies, you know? Some have immunities like Poison and Venom, so I need a piece of armour that can inflict bleed instead. Speaking of armour, I added to my collection with the Assassin Leggings and Chestplate, but this was purely to equip it, completing yet another quest for 3500 raw science. Time for another Black Widow. This time I was a little more relaxed though, since the first time went so well. Again, with the speed debuffs and having such good gear, it made this fight a lot easier, and it didn't take long for me to take down the second Black Widow. This allowed me to collect the Mega inside of the nest, meaning we now had all Megas and we were only missing one single Milk Molar. I also grabbed the Supreme Quartzite Rock here too, as I was running really low. There it is. The final Milk Molar. On Woe, this one is guarded by two Black Widows. Now that's dangerous. Here's the plan. Step 1. Eliminate all of the Widowlings. Step 2. Eliminate other nearby creatures while almost dying to ticks. Step 3. Distract one Widow and fight it first alone. With the first Widow eliminated, I was safe to move in and take down the other Widow. Both of these fights were pretty easy, but I'm alive and that's all that matters. I made sure to break the web sack to collect the Whittle Whittling Trinket and then finally collected the last Molar on the map, meaning I had all 123, completing another quest, giving me even more science, but more importantly, completing another objective that we needed to 100% the game. I made sure to spend these molars, of course, to max out all of my stats. Now we just needed to complete the Javamatic and collect the remaining gold cards in the final 15 days. Oh, and take down the two hardest bosses in the game. So nothing crazy. Remember when I said I wasn't going to upgrade those leggings? Yeah, well, I decided to upgrade them. The Widow leggings just weren't doing it for me anymore, okay? I decided to return to Moth Raids with a different approach this time, the Sour Battle Axe. I mean, this thing takes them down pretty quickly and made farming them much quicker. That didn't make this gold card any less painful though. On day 88, I decided to plug the haze, as the chat suggested it would be a good way to spawn more fungal growth across the map, which would in turn increase my chances of getting the fungal charm. For the record, I had been breaking haze fungus every time it respawned for the past 60 in-game days, and we still don't have the trinket. Plugging the haze also allowed me to peep this deadly enemy. I hate this guy, especially in Woe, as it's probably one of the most dangerous enemies. So, like the idiot I am, I shot at it. That wasn't a good idea, but I thought maybe I had a chance to kill it. Clearly not though, as I ran into the water. But silly me tried again, and I nearly paid the price, barely living at all. Let's not mess around with the most dangerous enemy in the game again, okay? Stupid idea. With my fear reinforced, I decided to try something else. Termite raids. Now I needed the Termite King gold card, and they made it so you can get kings from raids, so surely that's a good thing, right? Wrong. I found out while playing that you need to put a minimum of three Termite King Carapaces into the Waft Emitter to even have a chance of getting the King to spawn, which was only about a 40% chance by the way. And when you do kill it, he only drops one Carapace. You can get two more from stealing if you're extremely lucky. Then, when you don't get the King, you just get a load of Termites that don't give you anything you need. So, I made a solution which some of you may call me a cheat for. When I activate the raid, if there isn't a king, I'm allowed to reload my save until the king spawns. When the king does spawn, I have to kill it and loot it and continue to the next raid. This would still cost me science overall, but it was the fairest solution I could come up with, and if I didn't do this, I wouldn't have got the gold card for the termite king, I'm gonna be honest. Speaking of solutions to problems, I decided to make 20 beefy waspidotes. I'm sure you can imagine the problem that's causing this. I set up my mutations as Assassin, Coupe de Gras, Cardiofan, Mithridatism, and Spicy Safety. I headed back to the Super Duper to duplicate the boss summon, as I didn't want to craft more manually, and this is the cheapest way. I also made a wasp roll for even more poison resist. As I was leaving, a viewer told me to make some more smoothies, so I headed back to make 5 more waspidotes, taking me from 20 to 25. After drinking all of my smoothies, it was time to begin our hardest fight yet, the Wasp Queen. I made sure to peep her, and then got started. It started out well. Whenever she summoned, I just hit them once with my dagger, and they would bleed to death. 
allowing me to focus on taking her out. I was able to dodge her attacks with ease, but just around the two third health mark was when it changed. She started summoning a drone and two wasps instead of three regular wasps. These drones can heal her during the fight and are a big problem if not dealt with quickly. Okay, but one drone isn't too bad. So I continued the fight and she continued summoning, but her health was still declining and I was looking okay. But as the fight went on, this changed. Five real life minutes went by and her health hadn't changed one bit. I was down to just 11 wasp adults. So I paused the game to take a breather. She was healing quicker than I was damaging her and I had very little healing left myself. I needed to focus and find a way to stop the healing and take her down. I had nothing but hope and prayers. No matter what, I knew this would come down to the wire, but in my head, I was convinced I'd already lost. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Yeah, I want it louder though. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Let's run it. Let's go. In 1.3, they made it so using a shield reduces your damage dealt by 20% and this had clearly impacted my build, which I should have tested beforehand because it simply didn't do enough damage anymore. With little confidence left, I unpaused and continued, but as soon as I took out one wave of wasps, another spawned. But it was fine, I just had to take them out quicker, and maybe I could get lucky and chip away at her health. Then slowly, it started to happen. She kept summoning, but I was slowly taking her health down bit by bit. It wasn't enough though, so I took the risk and used my buff smoothies again increasing both my damage dealt and damage resist in hopes that the small buff would be enough. I made sure to take down every drone I saw, whilst also keeping the queen bleeding the entire time. It was working, her health was dropping, but so was mine. I only had two heals left and then it was over. It was down to the wire. She summoned one last time and all I had to do was make sure to get rid of them and prevent all healing, allowing me to get in and deal the necessary damage to finish her off. Wow. At the halfway point, I thought this was the world over. There was no chance. But somehow, I turned it around and was able to beat the Wasp Queen with just two smoothies to my name. If it wasn't for the one viewer who told me to craft five more beefy Wasp adults, we wouldn't be here. I would have lost that fight and the world would be over. Finishing this gave me bardic inspiration and completed another quest. When looting the body, I got decent drops, but no gold card. If anything, this made me prepare before any future bosses because I was particularly scared of the infected broodmother now. Not to mention, I would have to fight the Wasp Queen at least once more for the gold card. Moving into the final 10 days now, I decided to make a Mantis Fountain at home as this would save space and is an infinite water source, which is an amazing addition in 1.3. Back to farming moths again, and on day 90, it finally happened. I got the gold card. This one took me 135 moth kills, which is frankly a ridiculous number for such a difficult creature, but we had the gold card now, which was all that mattered. Next up were the Widows. I was doing single fang raids, so I only had to face one at a time, and they dropped quite a lot of items, which was nice. While the moth may have been unlucky, the Widow was very lucky, getting it in just seven kills or three raids, since I had already killed some Widows earlier on. Since we were now on day 90, I decided to prepare for the Java-matic, as we were running out of time, and whether or not I got 99% or 100%, I still needed to do this to actually beat the game. I also had to do more and more termite carapaces as I was using them all up farming termite king raids. On day 92, the fungal growth from plugging the haze finally spawned in, but it might have been too late as after breaking it all, I still didn't get the trinket and it was starting to look impossible. Time for the final defense. You can see my setup here, which is usually what I go for. It's just a bunch of bricks everywhere. This style battle axe was just obliterating everything in its path in two to three hits, but I still had to be careful not to die. After just a couple of minutes, I realized I'd forgotten to put any bricks on one of the areas, which was a huge weakness that could be the difference between winning and losing this defense, especially on Woe. I just had to be cool, calm, and calculated as I took enemies out of the sky and pummeled them with my ax. People were right, this is the best weapon in the game, and since every enemy here is weak to sour, it was even better. Even the Black Ox Beetle stood no chance, getting taken out in just a few combos. Of course the Bombardier got destroyed, and then a lady Ladybird tried its luck and failed. This thing just had no downsides whatsoever. After an easy but long battle, I was able to beat the Javamatic defense after 93 days, meaning we just had one boss and some gold cards remaining. That night, I took a risk and slept in my bed. The reason this is a risk is because sleeping loses me a lot of time as it skips further ahead. 
but the reason I did it was to get the cozy defense buff to ensure I couldn't be killed fighting the Mantis for the gold card. Safety first, always. I duped some more kebabs as this could take a few fights. I then made sure to use my crossbow to unlock stage 3 of Sharpshooter to be more prepared than ever. This now makes the crossbow have a 20% crit chance on every shot. We are sticking with the same mutations as last time, Sharpshooter, Meat Shield, Coupe de Gras, Trapper Peeper and Cardio Fan. There aren't many others that are good in this fight to be honest. Here we go, round 4 with the Mantis going for that gold card. This fight went very smoothly and I was able to take her out with no trouble at all. When looting her, I got the gold card after 4 kills. Another lucky one. Next, I started doing wolf spider raids to farm the fangs, but also to try to get the gold card. I very quickly got lucky and got myself the gold card, with this one being my 60th one, meaning we got stage 3 of Trapper Peeper and taking just 113 kills. That means we have 4 gold cards remaining, with 6 in-game days to go. It was going to be very close. On day 95, I got stage 3 of Whittle Wizard, yet again using Spiderlings as my main source of kills. This would be needed for taking on one of the bosses. I made myself a roly poly chestplate and upgraded it to level 9 bulky. I made this particularly for the infected wolf spider. I would combine this with the defense badge as well as spicy safety, and this would barely allow me to survive a full 3 hit explosive combo on Woe, since this attack is unblockable, which is the main reason I wanted the fungal charm. But after 95 days trying to get it, I simply didn't have time to waste. I went under the oak tree to try and find the infected wolf spider, but only saw the regular, so decided to approach him to get him out of the way. As soon as I went to attack, the wolf spider teleported and disappeared. It then reappeared to my left and the infected wolf spider jumped from inside the tree to come up behind me. It was an ambush. I made sure to play it safe and slowly retreat. Eventually the infected wolf spider got the regular one stuck in place and I was able to back away. After everything calmed down, I went back in and took down the infected wolf spider, making it our first time killing him. But sadly, I didn't get the gold card. I decided to max out my Salt Morning Star at level 9, as when planning for the Wasp Queen again, I was going to change weapons. On day 95, I collected the Muscle Sprouts from the Pond Dome one last time, as they wouldn't respawn again before the end of the playthrough. Time for the Wasp Queen again, but with a slightly different approach. Mutations on the left side, for those curious. This time I was using the Salt Morning Star and Spicy Staff. Again, this was a viewer recommended combo and the staff gave bleed to the wasps, killing them very quickly without having to get into melee range. And this fight took way less resources and I was pretty comfortably able to beat the Wasp Queen, but sadly didn't get the gold card. I went for back-to-back -back attempts and took down number 3, but yet again, no gold unfortunately. Day 97, it's time. Mutations, Blade Master, Coupe de Gras, Spicy Safety, Corporate Kickback and Shocking Dismissal. No Mithriditism because the IBM does Venom and not Poison. Spider Slider consumed at our meal, I spawned her in and made sure to peep her. Here goes nothing. In terms of armour, I have the roly poly helmet and leggings with the termite chestplate and then the giddy goop trinket with a level 9 fresh toenail scimitar. I set up a bind for my shield on my Y key on the controller, as this allowed me to easily equip and unequip the shield throughout the fight, which was essential as having the shield equipped reduces damage dealt by 20% in 1.3. In stage 1, my shield remained mostly unequipped and I destroyed the infected broodmother, but in this stage, that isn't too hard to be honest. When stage 1 ended, I started to use my smoothies, because I was using the Giddy Goop and turn my chest plate to slow her down, she stays down between phases for longer, which allowed for me to pop all of my smoothies, even with the delay, before she could get back up. Right, stage 2, this is where it gets interesting. This stage adds the Scream attack, so every time she tried to do it, I always made sure to use my shield to block it, as if you block it with the shield, you don't get the damage debuff, but blocking it with a weapon does give you the debuff unless you parry it. Again. This stage was nothing too crazy, and I headed into stage 3 with no healing debuffs at all. Yet again, popping smoothies in between stages 2 and 3 while she lays down and takes a break. Here we go, stage 3. The hardest part of the hardest boss in the game. Now the reason this is so hard is because she is really fast. But with the build I was running, there were 3 debuffs to slow her down, caused by my weapon, chest plate, and trinket. So honestly, she was really easy to block and this fight wasn't that bad at all. By the end, I only had 11 healing debuffs, and honestly, it was easier than the Wasp Queen. Although, as you can see after, I was a little bit nervous. 
This completed our final apprentice quest for 5,000 raw science and gave me Spore Lord. And when I looted her, I got some decent drops, but no gold card, meaning we have to do it at least one more time. As you can see, all 99 apprentice quests are done, as well as the science shop completely unlocked. We were looking amazing right now. This meant now I had 99% completion on day 97. With three days left, I needed four gold cards to get 100%. What I will ask you though is, can you give me one more day? I'm not asking you for a week. I'm not asking you for a month. I'm not asking you for a year. Can you give me one more day? I also analyzed the three parts she dropped, giving us a little more raw science and increasing our brain power to the maximum amount of 3,395. Back to the Wasp Queen now, and on attempt number four, we were lucky enough to get the gold card, putting us one step closer to 100% only three to go. Then, while farming the Termite King, I was lucky enough to get that gold card too. This one took me a whopping 88 kills. Which doesn't sound huge, but for Termite Kings, that's very annoying. Personally, I think this gold should have a 5-10% to drop chance, but it doesn't, it has a 1%. This left us with two. The Infected Wolf Spider, with a 1% chance, and the Infected Broodmother, with a 5% chance. Now, we have to talk about the Infected Wolf Spider. This thing costs 13 fangs to summon. 13! Before 1.3, it only cost 3 fangs. I don't know why they changed it. And even when you use 13, you only get a 50% chance to spawn the infected wolf spider. Killing it was fine. I had a great build and knew exactly what to do. But when you do kill it, you only get one fang in return. So each kill costs 12 spider fangs. To dupe these fangs costs 600 raw science. Each. Thus, 7,200 raw science per infected wolf spider. And I was broke. We'll come back to this in a second though. Now, when it comes to the infected broodmother, I changed the rules slightly. I summoned it and killed it, and if I didn't get the gold, I reloaded. This is because we were out of time, but I wasn't allowed to die at all. One failure and the world would still be over, even though we were reloading. This took me 20 kills in total, including the first one we killed, and I was finally able to get the gold card. This means I killed her 20 times back to back to back without messing up once that's why it's the goat the goat when visiting home i managed to get one final raid and it wasn't good a wasp raid this basically tore my whole base apart as i couldn't even damage them so i just ran the raid ended and my base was a mess but it didn't matter i just needed the last gold card when it comes to unlucky, no enemy comes close to the infected wolf spider. Now with this guy, I also decided to reload on the raids, as otherwise it would have cost me over 2 million raw science to get this gold. That's right, I spent about 9 hours real life time killing this enemy without dying and ended up killing it. 368 times for the gold card. The most of any creature in this entire world. Here was my reaction. Oh my god. Now, because I was reloading, the time barely progressed, which is why I was still on day 100. This means there's three creatures in total that I kinda cheated for. The Termite King, the Infected Broodmother, and the Infected Wolf Spider. If you want, you can call me a cheater and say I failed. Either way, I still got 99% with 61 golds. Or, if you don't think I'm a cheater, I got 100% with all 64. But at this point, it doesn't matter, because I put the embiggening cell into the spacer and activated the mysterious machine, making me grow big again. As you can see on the spacer screen, we survived 100 days, killing 6,980 creatures, parrying 4,500 attacks, and dying zero times. Most importantly, all of that with a 100% report card. Wow, what a conclusion. About as down to the wire as it gets. Thank you all so much for watching. If you appreciate the video, please leave a like on it. This took me over 200 hours of work in total, as well as a script with over 20,000 words. That's like a 70 page novel, seriously. I hope you all have an amazing holidays and I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.